Hi, this is Amaya Abhyankar from FinQuest Institute. In this video, we'll understand the concept of implied forward rates. This is a very important concept from the interstate markets. By definition, implied forward rate is defined as an expectation of a rate at a certain point of time in the future. So before we understand the approach to calculate this forward rate, let's try to understand an application where this forward rate gets used in practice. So imagine that I have a floating rate bond. So let's say the tenor of the bond is uh, 4 years. Let's say the coupon is LIBOR. And imagine the frequency is, quarter, uh, is annually, we will keep things simple. So if I have to price this bond, then I have four different time points at which I am receiving the coupons and finally the face value which gets, gets paid out at maturity. So if I write 1, 2, 3 and 4 to be the four time points, this is in years. I have my coupons which are being paid, so let's call it as coupon C for now. The C plus the face value. So these coupons are due at different points of time in the future. So we have an annual coupon paying bond. Now my coupon is linked to LIBOR. So as we know LIBOR is a floating rate benchmark. So by the name floating rate benchmark it is going to keep on fluctuating every day. So at the time of entering into the transaction the first coupon may be fixed. So let's say this LIBOR has been fixed at 3% just a high. Number. However, we don't know what the coupon is going to be at time points 2, 3 and 4 because this is a floating rate coupon. So this is where the concept of forward rates gets used. By using this concept, we try to imply what the LIBOR rates are going to be at time points 2, 3 and 4 and these are essentially the coupon payments on the bond. So I can calculate L2. L3 and L4 as the as the LIBOR rates at these points of time in the future and I'll be using these as coupon rates in my bond pricing calculation. So this is one of the applications of implied forward rates. Other example can be pricing of an interest rate swap. So those of you who are familiar with swaps we have uh, we have two legs for a swap. So imagine a plain vanilla interest rate swap so one leg pays fixed other pays floating. So fixed leg is easy because the coupon on that rate is on that leg is fixed. But for the floating leg, a similar concept of implied forwards has to be used because without using that concept, there is no way of computing what the floating leg payments are. And without that, it won't be possible to price the product. So that is another application of implied forward rates. So let's understand a technique by which we can calculate the forward rates. So let's say I have access to a spot rate curve. So I have a yield curve, I have bootstrapped it and I have spot rates which are available for me. So for now we'll assume that the bootstrapping engine is ready. So we have the spot rates for different tenors. So let's call S1 as the one year spot rate. Let's call S2 as the two year spot rate. And let's call F11 as the forward rate or it's the one year forward rate one year from now. So we have access to the first two. So we know S1, we know S2. We are trying to figure out what should be the value of F11 that is the one year rate one year from today. So that is what we call as a forward rate. So I'll write one equation and we try to understand this concept. Focusing on the equation in blue, we have 1 plus S2 square is equal to 1 plus S1 into 1 plus F11. So the way to interpret this equation is uh, assume there is an investor who has a two year investment horizon. So that investor should be indifferent to invest their funds at S2 for a period of two years or 
invest their funds at S1 for a period of one year and then reinvest their proceeds at F11 for the next year. So this is the interpretation of this equation and this is a no arbitrage calculation. So if there is any violation in this equality, then this is going to generate arbitrage opportunities. To understand this equation in a diagrammatic form, focus on the lower portion of the video. So I have shown a small timeline here. We have time 0 and time 2. So that's the uh, that's S1 and S2. So uh, we have S1 which extends from 0 to 1 year and S2 which extends from 0 to a 2 years time point. And the section which shows F11 which is shown in red, that is the rate which we are interested in calculating. And this is called as an implied forward rate. So why it's called as implied? Because this is a rate which we have to imply from the spot rates which are available to us. And by solving this equation, we can calculate F11. So likewise, if we have access to spot rates for other tenors, we can calculate the respective forward rates for those tenors as well. So once we have the forward rates available, we can use that as coupons or floating leg coupons for pricing any floating rate products which are sitting on our books. So be it a floating rate note, be it a swap or be it any other interstate product. So this completes our short introduction on implied forward rates. Thank you.